Hello, so welcome back to the booktube channel. What I'm going to be talking about today is uh, the next couple of books that I'm going to be uh, reading. So this is going to be only the physical books that I'm planning on reading next. Um, I've got four books here and um, two of them are from the library, two of them are books that I've purchased. I primarily buy my books, uh, I primarily get books from my local library and um, if I'm unable to get them then I will order them online but I usually donate them to the library afterwards. I don't really like to have a big large book collection. There are a few books that I make an exception for and I decide to keep as part of a small collection but really we're talking about like five or six books currently and I don't see that expanding beyond maybe 10 or 20 in the whole year of this year. So first thing that I'm going to be reading straight up next is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. So this is part of my uh, book club at my office. So I actually started the book club and one of my main motivations for starting was to get me to read books that weren't just kind of 900 page fa epic fantasy chunkers. So Piranesi is uh, the first book. I did choose this book um, and I suggested it to the group. Everyone seemed pretty excited about it. Um, I know absolutely nothing about this book and that's because everybody who I've seen talk about how much they loved it said to go in blind. So I'm going in blind. I know nothing about this book and I don't plan on doing any research. Um, I'm going to start reading this in kind of a week or two in early September because we're going to be doing the book club uh, throughout September. So there you go. That Fair and Easy is going to be the first thing that I read next month. Up next, we have got something completely different, Cursed by Benedict Jacker. So this is the second book in the Alex Vera series. The Alex Vera series by Benedict Jacker is one that is basically about a wizard who lives in London in the modern day and about how the real world and the magical world interact and how he, as kind of a low-level seer, so his, his magical skill is that he can see the future, his, how he, as a low-level seer, is kind of interacting with the much, much uh, higher and more powerful segments of magical society. Um, or at least that's kind of what the first book was about. And this second book, I have uh, no real idea what it's about. Um, looks like it is another kind of detective-y style case. Benedict Jacker's Alex Vera series um, I am reading because I have read all the Dresden books. I loved, loved, loved the Dresden books. So I was looking for something that would kind of scratch that same itch. I thought the first book was quite poor and quite weak, but there was so much potential there. And I thought that if Jim Butcher could get stronger as he goes with all of his writing, then I could definitely give Benedict Jacker a couple of more books. If this one is... Uh, as not to my liking as the first one. I don't know whether I'll carry on, uh, but at least it is a short book. It's only 300 pages, so I should be able to read it in a couple of days. Um, this one will probably be up as my very next read, um, but the book I'm reading now is uh, one of my favourites, a massive fantasy chunker. So you never know when that's going to be when I'm going to get to this one. Next up, after Cursed by Benedict Jacker, is YouTube's own, and I'll probably tag him in this video if you want to find out some more about him, but The Way of Edan by Philip Chase. Look at this awesome cover. Like, this cover is really cool. So The Way of Edan is an epic fantasy novel with kind of inspirations from Beowulf, Lord of the Rings, loads of kind of classic uh, fantasy literature. And um, I bought this book basically sight unseen because I am a big fan of Philip and I kind of just wanted to see what his writing was like. Um, and then everyone was also saying that the book was excellent. So that was kind of a, a first kind of a, a first thing that drew me in to being like, oh, maybe I should buy this book. And then on top of that, not only were people saying the book was excellent uh, and uh, I like, I've got a lot of time for Philip 
uh, but also the story when I read the, the kind of uh, the, the cliff notes of it, it sounded it sounded really intriguing. And I've been reading Ryan Carhill's Bound and Broken series, which is another more traditional fantasy series. It's very it's written in a very modern way, but you know we've got elves, we've got dwarves, we've got dragons, and the the way of Idan and the way that people talked about kind of how that was kind of another new take on classic fantasy. I was like, that's exactly what I want right now. I want elves. I want dragons. I want dwarves. I want. I. I. I really love the the kind of Sanderson style of fantasy where it's mostly just humans and people. Um, but I'm also kind of. I. I. I do really like these big worlds with the. With uh, lots of different races and cultures and civilizations, you often find that the humans in these epic fantasies are very kind of homogenous like the culture doesn't change from place to place um so that's what i kind of want from i want that kind of experience and that world building that you get from having those multiple cultures and it's kind of a cheat code to do that with like dwarves and elves because you know dwarves and elves are, are different species so they, they do have a very different culture or well, they should at least um, the final book on my TBR, and this is going to be one... Well, it's not the final book on my TBR, but it's the final one that I'm going to read in the near future, is the aforementioned Brandon Sanderson and Tress of the Emerald Sea. Now, I've just picked this up, and there is a spider on this book, so that's quite terrifying because I'm uh, arachnophobic. Oh, oh, there's two of them. Oh, this is terrifying. So, um, this is. I'm going to put this book down. Sorry about that. That was genuinely terrifying. I'm um, really. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to keep that in and not edit it. But I'm feeling very nervous about these spiders that are on the floor next to me as an arachnophobe. So, uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea. It is the first in Brandon Sanderson's series of secret novels. So he wrote four secret novels during the pandemic. And then he decided to sell them on Kickstarter. I backed the Kickstarter at the ebook level because at the time I was primarily reading ebooks because, you know, as I've said previously, I'm really not into um, kind of having a book collection. And I feel weird uh, buying and selling books or buying and giving them away. I feel like I should just go to the library if I can. Uh, and supporting my local library is good. Um, however, Trust the MLT wasn't available at the library, um, and um, I didn't really want to read the ebook. And I, I was in kind of a privileged position enough to go like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. I'm just going to buy this book. So I bought it. Uh, so I, I bought it twice. So uh, Brando Sando, one of the richest fantasy writers in the world, uh, I've been lining his pockets. But the um, uh, this book uh, sounded really cool. And uh, I kind of had this thought that I would buy the three Cosmere um, hardbacks uh, when they released in the UK and, and the kind of the print editions, because I thought that would be kind of a fun collection to have is just to have those three books because um, they were all kind of happening and being talked about as I was deep, deep, deep into reading Sanderson. And it was really exciting for me at the time that they were launching. So I am really into I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this kind of like secret novel launching thing. I thought it was really fun. So I thought that I'll support that in terms of actually adding to my permanent collection. Although I don't know, maybe there's maybe the spiders, maybe it's their book now. Uh, I certainly am not going to be touching it again for a while. Maybe I'll put the book in uh, in with the cat and hope he sorts it out. Anyway, so Tress of the Emerald Sea is about a woman named Tress. And she lives on a small island in the Emerald Sea. And she's in love with this boy. And then this boy has to leave the island. And she decides to kind of take that step and leave that island for the first time for herself. Now it's a it's been described as kind of like a um Princess Bride style kind of classic fantasy. And sorry, I'm like terribly nervous about these spiders now. This is the worst TBR video. Not I don't think anyone's made a TBR video where the book has been had spiders on it and then they have been terrified about the spiders afterwards. I don't even know all that much about Tress. I've kind of stayed 
blind on it. So uh, as I was saying, it's kind of about uh, Tress and she goes on this adventure. The thing that I know about it is that it's um, narrated by Hoyd and Hoyd is like one of the most important characters in the Cosmere. So it'll be excellent to kind of get more of him and more of his voice and kind of understanding and, and what he's like. Um, he's one of the most interesting things in any of the Cosmere books for my money. So I'm kind of excited to to see where this goes. Um, Tress is uh, and has kind of been for the whole year right at the bottom of my TBR. And I keep kind of pushing it back and back and back and back. I promised my friend that I'll read it this year. But with Sanderson stuff, because I've got a few books hanging around now, so I've got like Yumi, I've not read Elantris, I kind of felt like I'd let the three secret Cosmere novels build up and come out, and then I would read all three and Elantris and then kind of be up to date on the Cosmere. I also thought about reading the Sky Skyward books this year because the final book is out, um, and it, I really enjoy being able to, uh, because I'm kind of a newbie to fantasy and science fiction, be able to read an entire series and then read the brand new novel as it comes out and, and read it with everyone else. Um, so that's probably something I'll consider doing, um, but I've still got a few months to decide whether I want to do that. And those books, um, because they are shorter and they're Sanderson and he's such a quick read, I'll probably be able to read those real quick. Um, so I do have a few more books now, books down here, but well, those are the spiders books now. They're not, they're not mine. Um, I'm just going to have to leave them in this room and hope that they, uh, will let me read them at some point. That would be nice. Um, so, uh, after the weird and chaotic, uh, TBR video, I can't believe this is my first TBR video and I haven't put a time or date on when I'm going to read them or when I'm going to read them by and I haven't uh, even talked about all the books that I'm going to read. This is just kind of like my physical TBR that I have sitting next to me as I uh, sit at my desk. So I hope you have fun with this incredibly weird and chaotic TBR and uh, if you are watching this you should comment a spider emoji or something or like a spider web to scare the shit out of me. Uh, pardon my French. Or um, you could, uh, maybe in a more sensible way, comment and tell me what books I need to add to this TBR. Um, I'm not scared about books about spiders, just the actual thing. So if you want to recommend a spider book, go for it. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and all the usual junk that everyone asks you to do. And I will speak to you soon.